As you probably know, X-Ray is a test management app for Jira that allows you to create tests and other related artifacts as Jira issues. Uh, it also supports both manual and automated test cases. Uh, it provides test coverage for requirements based on test results. So for this demo today, I'll assume that you already have some knowledge of X-Ray as this webinar is focused only on test environments. So we often have test cases that need to be tested in different environments. So things like different domains, different contexts. We also have to have a visibility of our status a per environment basis, okay? X-Ray allows you to execute tests for specific environments already and provides also the ability to analyze your project or test campaign by different environments. So what is in an environment? So I think this is better explained uh, with these examples that we have here. So environments can be something like a testing stage where you can have development, staging, pre-production or production even. So we can have uh, the same test case being tested for all of these different environments. We also have a browser is a, is a concrete example of an environment. So if you are doing web apps, Perhaps you need to test the web apps in different browsers like Chrome, Firefox, and so on. So you can just use the same test cases because the functionality is really the same and uh, test uh, the same test case for different environments. The same thing happens with devices. So if you have, for instance, a, a mobile application, you can test it for Android or iPhone. Uh, often the features are really the same, so the test cases are also the same. They just need to be executed in different environments. We have a language also here as, as an example, and of course other, other uh, special configurations for your uh, system under test. Okay. Within X-Ray, uh, test environments are implemented as a label fields on test execution issues. So it's also important to point out what is not a test environment. So first of all, a test environment is not only a field on test execution issues. So X-Ray will provide high level visibility of test and coverage results per environment uh, for a given project or for a subset of requirement issues, for instance. Also, it's important to distinguish between test environments and test parameters although in some cases this might be difficult. So we provide these hints uh, that you can see here. So quantity, visibility, and scope. So let's say that we need to perform tests in a calculator app using a set of 10,000 values. So these can be considered as parameters, as, prob we, as probably we don't need to have a high level visibility of which values are failing. We just need to know if the test is passing or failing for all the parameters as one. The scope can also be an important decision factor. If a given condition affects the whole test, not just a given step of the test script, then most probably this will be mapped as a test environment. So for now, test parameterization is not yet available in X-Ray. We plan to provide this feature in a future release. So let's now do a quick demo of X-Ray and uh, the status of how test environments are implemented right now with X-Ray. So for our demo today, we have one, one requirement that is going to implement a new feature for version 3.0. We have three different test cases testing the, 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 the requirements. Then we have also a test plan created for these test cases, and we'll see that we have different test executions. So these are just tasks where each test execution will be assigned its own environment. So we'll be testing for pre-production and staging environments. And then of course, we will check how these tests are performing for that specific version and for each environment. And what about the requirement coverage? So we also need to check uh, either directly the status of the user story or the requirement, 
or uh, using different reports. And you can also, of course, check the status uh, by different environments there as well. Hello. So let's go directly for the demo environment that we have here. I'm going to start by showing you here, here a user story and the user stories that we have. Uh, as you can see, currently the user story is not okay. And this means that one of the tests here is failing. So as I said, we have three test cases testing this user story here, and one of them is failing. So let's analyze the status for, the, for a different environment. So as you can see, right now we are considering all environments. And when this feature is, is set just like this, so all environments, X-Ray will aggregate all the executions for different environments and uh, merge basically the status for the environments. And as you'll see, uh, if one environment is failing, this affects the old, the old environments. And so the test is really failing right now. So if we choose the, the, our staging environment, as you can see, all the tests are passing. Okay. But if we choose the pre-production environment, this test case is failing. So if we merge the result from failing to pass, of course, the test will be failing. And this is why, and X-Ray provides this aggregation right here from the user story screen. You can have a different perspective uh, looking at the test plan. So if you remember, a test plan has basically two different goals. So the first goal is to define uh, the scope for your test campaign. So which tests matter for your test campaign? The second scope is to provide always the latest execution result for the tests contained on the test plan. So as you can see here, this is the latest execution result for the test plan. You have two tests passing and one of them is failing. And you can also see that we have two different execution tasks that contain all of the test cases for two different environments. So as you can see, we have one test execution for, for pre-production, and then we have another test execution for staging. And uh, as you can see here also, because we have two test runs for this test case here, I can check the status for each one of those test runs. So the test run for the staging environment is passing, but the pre-production is failing. So I need to check why this is failing on this environment. And the important thing here is that X-Ray will aggregate these results based on the latest execution for each environment and present uh, an overall result. So our test case is failing because we have one failing environment. We can also have this visibility in, in the X-ray reports. So I'll just give you an example here. So this is the traceability report. And if you notice here, we are already filtering by our user story. And we are right now considering uh, calculating the status for the requirement based on version 3.0 and but for all the environments. So let's generate the report. As you can see, we have the same status that we were looking at on the user story. So the status of the user story is not okay because I have three test cases. Two of them are passing, but uh, this one, the manual test case is failing and it is failing because, because the latest execution for the environment pre-production is also failing. So X-Ray aggregates all of this information and pre presents always the latest execution result here on the requirement issues. So let's now uh, try to see or try to filter by the staging environment. So if we apply, so we are now just looking at the report from the point of view of the staging environment. So here only the staging executions will be presented. And based on these executions, of course, the user story is okay because all of the tests are now passing. You can see the same thing for pre-production. Uh, choose the environment. We only see the test executions for pre-production right now. And we'll check that the, the status for the user story is not okay right now. So this is all for, for the demo from our part. Let me get back here to the slides. However, uh, X-Ray lacks some management capabilities for test environments. So 
because test environments are just labels, you cannot easily create, edit, or delete labels or test environments. Also, managing permissions is not very easy. Then you cannot have uh, per project environments, not even custom attributes in on environment, uh, environments because they are not really entities. Uh, you are not able to track or plan events for the test environments on a timeline. You can't also track versions uh, deployed by for each environment, and you cannot see the health status for a given environment. So these are limitations that uh, AppWide and GoLive will cover. And right now, I'll pass the ball to them. Thank you very much, Bruno. So uh, as Bruno mentioned, there are, there are still some things that you that you are able to do with X-Ray concerning test environments, but we as we as by us understanding our limitations on this it will it was very interesting also to invite app wide go live um of course david and Willem will talk a bit a bit more deeply about the about the tool what we are capable to do it is uh, a jira add-on the same way as as x-ray is so everything will be in the same tool don't need to go to do some to go some some external tool it will be interesting to see some of these uh, um limitations that that Bruno mentioned that could be covered with AppWide Go Live. So, David Guillaume, are you still there with us? Yes. Yes, sure. Perfect. No, no sleep, no sleeping moment yet. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. So, uh, David, just before you start the introduction, David Guillaume, how long is, is AppWide in the market already? So, for, for how long is, is it live? Um, so, so AppWide Go Live is live, uh, is live already four years ago. We have launched uh, the, the first version of Apoid Go Live. It was mainly focused on environments. And progressively, we have added uh, many other features like the scheduling, uh, which is which is now one of the, the big strengths of our product. Very cool. So I will ask you, uh, David, to actually tell us a bit about some specific use cases. Give us some example how Apoid can actually um, get get better usage of, of these test environments so it can be right, right useful if I need to use and if I want to actually use, I need to manage environments in my system and in my in my organization. So tell us a bit more about, about some use cases, some specific use cases, and, and I guess showing the tool is the best best way for it. Go on. Yeah, sure. I will show you that. Um, let me share my screen. Tell me when you can see it. Yes, we can see it. Perfect. OK, perfect. So thanks a lot, Joao and, and Bruno, for the introduction. You know what, I love X-Ray and I'm very proud that AppWide Live is finally integrated with your app. Um, so I'm, as you said, I'm not alone, I'm with Guillaume. Uh, Guillaume, are you here, yeah? Yes, still. Perfect. Yes. <laughs> Good, <laughs> because you are the best to answer to all technical questions. Uh, yes. So Guillaume is like me, one of the founders of AppWide. We are based in Switzerland, in Lausanne. And Guillaume is the, the product owner of AppWide Go Live, which is our main Jira app. Um, in fact, we decided to launch that app because we were tired of, of listening again and again to the same kind of questions. In my previous job, I was working for a very large organization. We had hundreds of applications, thousands of environments, uh, many people involved like uh, developers, testers, project managers, uh, configurators, uh, and so on. And everybody had kind of the same issue. They didn't know which versions were deployed on which environments at a point, uh, at a point in time. And we always ended up with the same kind of questions like, where can I test the, the, latest, fix, the latest fix? Or can you give me the, the URL of, uh, of that environment? And I, I remember once that it was on, on Friday. Uh, so we, we, we had a very big release the, 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 the next week. Uh, we, we just finalized the NRT session we are, we, with our team uh, that, was, that was offshore. And then on Friday afternoon, we noticed that, yeah, we have been tested uh, the, the NRD on, on, on the wrong version <laughs> for the whole week. And then I had to explain to the management that, hey, OK, guys, sorry, we are not going to release the major release next week. It will be probably the week after. Uh, yeah, that was kind of an issue. And, and I thought, yeah, we, we, we really need to improve the way we manage our uh, our environments because there was so much frustration and uh, lots of time and money that were that were lost because of of issues with the uh, with the test environments and people not getting the right information at the at, at the right time when they needed them. So let me show you uh, how it works. So 
let's say that I'm the I'm working in a team working on the calculator. So the calculator is a very nice application that is a, a calculator, <laughs> uh, but it has some specific feature like the AI calculation. So it's uh, based on artificial intelligence. I can think about an operation, click there, and and then I get the results. So yeah, it's kind of very powerful. So let me come back to the to my test execution because here I'm in the middle of uh, of a test campaign. So X-ray test campaign. I'm using X-ray. Uh, so it is a test execution. Uh, it's not label anymore because when you activate upwide, when I just activated upwide, I have much uh, more features. So like uh, like Bruno explained. Uh, there, are, there are much more than just a label. So here I have the, the title of my environment. So we are on the front end staging. Uh, I can see the URL that I, I just click on it to, to open uh, the, the environment uh, right from there. So it's directly contextualized information. Uh, I know the status. So I see that the back seems to be yellow. Yellow is slow. So maybe if my uh, tests are not successful, it's because of that. Um, uh, and then I have also some attributes like ah, <laughs> uh, the that server is located in in Lisbon. Is it in uh, X-ray premises in your data center, uh, Joao? Yeah, well, we're basically controlling everything, so this is <laughs> of course it is. <laughs> yeah, so you you have the location, you have the okay. The green team is my team. Uh, I can store some credentials, and I can have only part of the people that will be able to, to see that. You can really restrict the visibility of the attributes. And then I have the history of my deployments. So right now, I have the version front 2.4 uh, that is currently deployed on that environment. So this is a Jira version uh, that I have in my uh, Jira project, in the calculator Jira project that I have, uh, that I have deployed on, on that uh, specific environment from staging. I have also the history of the status changes. Uh, so I, I know that now it's up, but uh, there was a deployment uh, uh, a bit uh, earlier today. Um, and um, all of that so give me, gives me really uh, contextualized information right into my test execution. I can have the same uh, as we'll see in a test plan or in other X-ray objects. Uh, but now I need to continue my test execution. So yesterday I have started to test the, the first uh, the first test, one passed, the other failed. I was executing that one. Uh, let's continue the testing. Uh, as you can see here, you have also the test environments uh, with the same kind of information that I just showed you before. Uh, also the URL if I want to open it uh, right from there. Uh, if I want now to create a new defect, uh, I'm going to, to add a bug. Uh, I was doing the subtraction calculation. So let's say that uh, 4 uh, minus 2 uh, equal 5. So <laughs> that's a bug. Uh, you see that I have the affected version that is already set up by X-ray to the 2.4 because I was making my test execution on the version 2.4. So it's automatically pop, um, populated. And then what I want to show you um, is that I, I, I need to to select the, the environment on which I have detected my bug. So I was testing on front staging. I can select it, and then I am able to create uh, my bug. Let's open it. So here we are on a Jira bug, uh, standard one. And as you can see, there is also the same information that I had previously inside the bug. So in fact, this is in fact a custom field, environment custom field, where I can uh, add also uh, more than, than one environment. Let's say that I tested on the front, but maybe there is also an issue with the back. So I will select also the, the staging uh, backend. I can select several environments. And something important, <laughs> the magic blue star. Um, I don't know you, but in my previous experience, we were using distribution list for all the activities um, around, uh, around releases, around uh, Let's say I, I deployed that that uh, specific version on that environment. Now you can start your testing campaign. So we, we had like distribution list. Uh, usually we were using one for the for the whole team, and then each time there was like someone new on the project, like a new project manager, we added him in the list. Uh, and then one month after, uh, when he was gone, uh, the pro he was he was moving to another project. He was still getting uh, all the information that were linked to to our deployments, uh, it was like spam. 
And at the same time, we also forgot to add the newcomers uh, who just joined the team. We forgot to update the distribution list. So what we thought was, OK, let's take the, take the program from the other side. We want every single Jira user to be, to be able to subscribe to read the notification that matters for them. So here I just clicked on the, on the calculator backstaging which is uh, one of my environment. And for that specific environment, I can decide to be notified each time there will be a new version deployed on that environment. Each time the status will change, like for instance, if the environment is down or if the environment is uh, slow, I will get also a notification if I select that one. Uh, if some setup of configuration of your environment are changing, like the credential change, etc., I can also get some notifications. And also when an issue like here, the bug is raised on that environment, I can also get a notification. Let me show you how it looks like. So it's like that we are leveraging uh, the, the standard uh, Jira notification system. I think there is a change in Jira 8 and there will be some batch notification, but uh, here I'm still on Jira 7 on my demo environment. So I, I receive like uh, one email. Uh, so each time there is uh, something triggered uh, that, I, that I subscribe to. Uh, here I see that the front 2.5 uh, version has been deployed in a calculator front staging. I have the URL of the environment. See, I'm on staging. Uh, and I can also stop watching the environment uh, very easily just by clicking here so that if people are leaving the project, they continue to receive the notification in one click. Okay, they will not receive them anymore. Okay, so now I, I'm still testing. I, I have built like a very nice dashboard here. It's called uh, Calc Dashboard. It's for my uh, calculator application uh, where I have listed in a gadget all the environments that are linked to that application, so the back and the front. And I have for all of them uh, the, the version that is currently deployed, as well as the status with the color. So I can see that the, the back of pre-prod is, uh, is down, apparently. And what I have here are the, I, I, I made my dashboard with the bugs that I, uh, that I would like to, to test because I have raised them last week. It has been tested, uh, sorry, it has been fixed by the development team and now I need to test them again. So they are here. Uh, the problem of that uh, is that they are not uh, deployed yet. If I open one of them, I see that, so I raised them on the 2.4, it has been fixed on the 2.5. Uh, the problem is that the 2.5 is deployed, uh, is not deployed uh, anywhere. And how do I know that? Because I have here on the bottom right corner, the environment panel that is giving me for the same application that I selected here in my field, what are the version deployed on the different stages? Like I see that I have four, four uh, different environments for that specific application, int one, staging, pre-prod and prod. And you see that, yeah, there is only the, yeah, the 2.5 is there uh, where I could test it, but the pre-prod environment is down. And that's one. That's why on my dashboard here, it does not appear here. And what we'll see is that now if I decide uh, to create a new environment, because you can also do that with AppWide. Uh, so that's the list of all my environments. There are many. I will just filter to see only my calculator front environments. I have only uh, the, the four that I, we just discussed before. And now what I would like to do is to create a new environment where I'm going to deploy that 2.5 version that I need in order to retest the bug that has been fixed. Let me do that. I will create the integration to environment. And I will deploy the version we said 2.5. Yeah. So now the, the magic will happen and uh, I will let Guillaume. Guillaume, can you explain uh, technically yes. what is happening more now? Yes, with pleasure. So um, David showed plenty of good things uh, of Jira and Apple interacting with human being, but luckily in a DevOps world or a fast moving DevOps world, DevOps world uh, Jira and Apple Go Live is also able to talk with other systems, with external systems, with other machines. So in order to do that, David show you, uh, have shown you how uh, AppWide can send email to notify uh, human beings that something happened on the environment, uh, but can, Jira can also uh, send some notification to external system using webhooks. 
so uh, with Upwad, we have extending, we have extended the standard webhooks of Jira uh, to also include some events that can happen on your environment. And for example, when David just clicked uh, to create a new environment, he just triggered an event and he sent all the information of the environment that were just created by David to Jenkins. And then Jenkins uh, say, ah, okay, it's environment integration to calculator front. It doesn't exist yet. I have no container existing. So I create a new Docker container and I will deploy the version 2.5 uh, on this newly created container. Uh, so you can perhaps refresh, David. And the interesting point is that, okay, uh, when you start a deployment, it takes some time and it's quite interesting to know when it's finished and when environment is up again. Uh, so here Jenkins has the ability to, using the REST API of AppWide, to really update all the information of your environment. And in, in our case, uh, David uh, has not set any kind of things regarding the URL. And very often URL are, are quite complex. And especially if you are working with uh, automatic provisioning, uh, they cannot be guessed in advance. Uh, or with the port that will be used to, to, to run your, your, your server. So all these kind of things, as soon as Jenkins or any other tools, Bamboo or, or Spinnaker or any kind of things, have finished to, to provision the environment, uh, they can, uh, it can automatically update information back to your environment and notify end user that environment is ready and can be used for testing. And the good news is, okay, uh, this is an example. The DevOps team has worked very, very well to automate all the process, but in reality, especially in big companies, you have a lot of legacy applications that are still manually managed, but okay, no problem. You just start uh, automation progressively as, as you are on the DevOps way. You are starting, starting automating progressively different kind of things, and you, you can integrate this progressively and uh, at the same time keep uh, a manual management manual update of information of your environments. But the good news is that you can have all this kind of information in the same tool in AppWide Go Live. OK, thanks a lot, uh, Guillaume. That was the technical minute. Um, <laughs> let, let's see if, the, if the, the deployment went well. Uh, if I click there, yeah, I have my calculator. And it's my new in, uh, environment uh, integration too. So very good. I can go back to my dashboard. And here, now you can see that on the third column, I have uh, where, where are all the, the bugs that are fixed, but that are already deployed on an environment that is up. So it appears here. Um, so it's really like a dynamic release node. So for, the, for me, uh, who is a tester, I can just uh, take my dashboard here. And each time I will have something here, I know that not only the bugs, the bugs are fixed, but they are also deployed on an environment that is available. And that's a big plus uh, because how much time I, I spent in the past of uh, not knowing uh, where it was deployed, uh, where that version is. Now you have all uh, directly in the same dashboard. And so if I click there, uh, I'm going to, to test that. So again, uh, I can see the new environment that I have just created, integration two. Let me open it. I can test it, okay, and if I'm happy, if the, the bug has been solved, I can close the issue. And now it's asking me, uh, where have you retested uh, the bug? So I, we tested it in uh, integration two, so the new environment, I close it. Uh, and what you can see here is that you can have more than one environment custom field in uh, all your Jira issues. And here we are on a bug, but you can uh, have them also on a story or uh, whatever Jira issue that you are using. Good, so I'm I'm fine. I, I, I made all my testing for today. Um, I can move to the second part, which is the fight for environments. <laughs> so what do I mean about that? I mean, uh, I mean uh, that it's very important to schedule uh, things. And in my, my past experience, um, so I remember that guy one day, again, we were just before releasing a, a big release. Uh, we needed to have staging uh, fully available for our team. And that guy came to me, yeah, uh, David, uh, so we need to make a load testing campaign. We did a prod-like environment. So there is only staging because prod-like environment, it means that it's huge. Uh, we have only one. 
Uh, and yeah, I, I need that one because we need uh, to make a lo load testing for the next two weeks. I told him, uh, no, <laughs> next time you, you, you come to me like one month in advance uh, for asking. And I told me, uh, yeah, I came one month in advance. Look at that. And he showed me an email where he was asking uh, uh, that environment for the load testing. And I answered him uh, that it's approved. The point is that I forgot to register that in our Outlook calendar that we were using uh, for the, the environment booking. Um, another example that, uh, that I had was, yeah, the IT project managers uh, in my previous experience, they were traveling around the world. Uh, so we were developing, we were coding in the, in the cave and they were showing the nice feature that we produced to the market. So they went to Singapore, Canada, a bit everywhere. Uh, they were traveling a lot, but when they went there, they had to show the new feature to the, to the market. And for that, they had some demo sessions. And during that, those moments, the environment should be up and nobody should be changing the configuration. So for that as well, we were using some Outlook calendars uh, and sometimes uh, they were not entirely up to date. Um, another question and, um, and yeah, again, uh, in my previous job, so we had uh, the official plan that was done at the very beginning of the year. Like in the, the beginning of January, there was the, a guy called the release manager, the global release manager. He was uh, so taking a Microsoft project and starting to plan, okay, there will be four major releases. There will be those uh, non-regression testing sessions, etc. So he was planning for the whole year, uh, a very nice plan in MS project. Then he was putting that on a SharePoint so that other people can, uh, can contribute. Then he was uh, making a PDF out of it because not everybody has MS project on their computer. So uh, then he was sending the PDF to uh, to the whole organization. We were putting it on the on the intranet, and in the end, you you, en you ended up with a plan that was uh, that that was changing during the year because priorities are evolving. But then uh, you, you couldn't know where to find the latest version of the plan. So yeah, here, if, if we could have uh, a thing that is more like uh, common, that is shared by everybody, uh, a plan that, uh, that, uh, that, can, uh, that can be updated regularly and everybody is informed, that would be probably much better. Yeah, last one, <laughs> that, that one is, is for me. It was like two years ago, uh, I was very happy when I discovered Jira, Jira Service Desk. And uh, for a customer, I, I was configuring uh, like a very nice Jira Service Desk portal uh, during two weeks and uh, just when I was showing the MVP to to the customer uh, I saw that yeah there was nothing left <laughs> because my team was updating refreshing the, uh, the Jira staging environment uh, in the meantime and I didn't know uh, about it so now we understand the importance of uh, of, of planning and of having something uh, something robust and easy to use you know to plan things so let me show you uh something uh here i'm again in my calculator application i'm showing you all the test execution that are planned and if i want to reschedule a bit my uh, my uh, test executions what do i have to do uh, so let me change the first one so i will go here uh where are the dates here okay so i will move uh, one one day uh, later my test execution i will save that okay good now i will do that for the second one etc so you you understand it, it's it's kind of a bit uh, a bit complex to do that and so what i thought uh, to do was to create a timeline uh, a timeline with uh, up white go live uh, that is showing me uh, the, the the release plan and what i have here uh so in fact i have some uh some test plans that are here like the one of january the one of february uh and in fact uh, those events that are here on my timeline are in fact uh, test plans or uh, test executions and uh so this works well because i can update them uh, very easily so by uh, just changing uh, like that, if I want to shorten it a bit, if I want to move it uh, earlier, I can do that right from there. And automatically by doing that, it's going to update the, the date. So the begin date and the end date that are here. 
So you don't need anymore to change uh, each of the field, but you can just uh, draw your timeline uh, like this. So let's say that I, I would like to do the same for uh, for April to plan a test plan for 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 April. So what I can do is to switch. Uh, yeah, I haven't shown you here. There are also the test executions uh, under, but it, it's the same principle, just with test executions. Um, let's plan something for April. Uh, so I have here my uh, different calendars, test plan, text execution, uh, and other stuff. And what I can do is a drag and drop of that event, of the calendar. Uh, of, first, uh, first, I need to change because I need to see my environment as a swim lane. Uh, it is an option that, that I have on my timeline. I can have, instead of having swim lanes per calendar, I can have swim lanes per environment. Here they are. You have the integration one. Ah, you have the environment that we have just created uh, earlier. And now I can start to, to plan. So let's say that my test plan, I want to do it in April on our new environment, for instance, integration two. So it will be my non-regression testing, uh, ah, not March, April already. Um, okay. And now it's here, so it has created like a new Jira issue, a new test plan, X-ray test plan, and again you can uh, you can plan it directly from the timeline. So yeah, it's uh, like that. It's much easier, but it's it's nice it's nice to see all the the X-ray objects on that view. It's even better if I can know what other kind of um, of events are going to, to take place uh, during that time. So for that, I, I have here, I, uh, in order to show you, I, I put the data refresh and the sec security scans that are other kind of events that I can make appear on my timeline. And what you can see is that here, for instance, I have a data refresh uh, where the, the environment will be, uh, will be down during that time. So I need to make sure uh, that my Test plan that I have here uh, is is not going to, to to be done at the same time. Otherwise, it's going to conflict. So I can update like this uh, so that I will I will be able to to finish a bit earlier, and the data refresh is not going to impact me. So same with security scan. Here I see that I have a security scan, but the environment will be slow and not down. So I think it's okay. I can keep keep my uh, test plan at the same time. So this is how it works. Uh, what I have done as well, because last week I had a um, post implementation review uh, of the previous release of the, the release of uh, January. And for that, we were sitting all in a room and I have Built that uh, that small uh, that smaller timeline that is showing me for all the different applications that we are working on. So it's not anymore just the calculator, uh, but they have uh, a, lo a lot of other applications as well. And for uh, for all those applications, I I know uh, what version was deployed at uh, what point in the time. So I can zoom on that to go to a very uh, detailed, I can go up to the minute if I want, if I have something uh, that, is, uh, that, that is very detailed. And so, so then from the moment you have that, it's, it's very easy to, to discuss about, yeah, what happened, uh, why uh, that version was deployed so late uh, in, during our release, etc. And what I have here as well are the changes of status. So you have the colors. So here, for instance, integration two uh, was uh, slow. Integration two of my e-commerce platform was slow. And um, that one, integration one was down during that time. And if you want to make some analysis, uh, like on a post-implementation review, this could be very useful. Um, I also would like to show you one uh, other dashboard that I built. It's about the release of my calculator application. And I'm getting so many uh, questions from all our stakeholders, like, uh, when are you going to release that? Or have you already uh, built that feature, et cetera, that I, I have built that dashboard that is giving me, like before, uh, uh, the status of the different environments. 
and that is showing me as well the timeline. Uh, that dashboard, I can publish it to everybody, even to people who don't have a Jira account. And what I can do as well is to push that on a Confluence page, on a wiki page. Uh, and again, everybody will be able to access it, uh, even if they, uh, they don't have a Confluence account. So it is something that um, that is uh, yeah that is uh, very useful if uh, you have some uh, some plannings to to show or even some uh, product roadmap or release plan that you would like to share uh, across the organization to publish even on the, the intranet. This is something that is possible. So just a quick recap of what we what we saw today. Um, so first of all, I showed you how you can uh, get environment information inside your Jira issues. So for X-ray test plan, test execution, you get the URL of the environment, the status, the, the, the latest deployment. Uh, you get all the configuration setup of your environments directly inside your Jira issues. It's also possible, like, like uh, Guillaume explained, to trigger uh, the deployment of uh, versions or even the um, the deployment of the provisioning of new environments uh, using uh, the integration with the REST API and with the webhooks. Uh, so we have a lot of customers that are integrating uh, uh, yeah, Spinnaker, we have uh, uh, Team City, we have so, 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 many, uh, so many tools that are Bamboo, Jenkins, uh, etc. So it works very well. We have a very open uh, API, and we're also using a Swagger UI browser that is integrated in our tool to really help uh, any developer to integrate very quickly with other systems. Uh, we saw that it's possible to schedule X-ray tests on the visual timeline, but not only X-ray tests. It's also possible to see uh, other stuff uh, around, uh, different kind of, uh, of activities that are, that are taking place. Uh, in your uh, in your systems, and it's also possible to share a release plan, product roadmap to the whole organization using the gadgets that are displayed either in a Jira dashboard or on a Confluence page. So there are many other features I didn't have the time to cover today, but if you want to know more about Upwhite Go Live, just send me an email and I will organize a demo just for you. So as you can see, and uh, before of that, thank you very much, David, for your demo. It was very cool. So as you can see, uh, both the X-Ray team and the App Wide Go Live team have been working together to provide this integration. Okay, so it's now possible using X-Ray to have the power, of course, to have a test management add-on inside Jira with all its capabilities and also have test environments and have visibility on the reports about uh, the tests for a specific environment or for all the environments that were uh, that the test executions were tested in. And of course, it's also possible to manage environments in a better way using the, the app wide go live integration. And of course, as you could see also with, by the David demo, it's possible to even enhance the planning capabilities uh, using uh, this integration as well. Okay, so thank you very much.